Welcome. This is Escape Pod Comics in Huntington, Long Island. Today, we're here to recommend yet another book. In fact, an entire series. Some conditions, some information you should have before I start talking about this series, Shangri-La Frontier. I am very much just a comic book reader. I hardly ever watch TV shows, read light novels, anything made from or the source of manga. I have read tons of manga and graphic novels that are originally novels never gone back and read the book, such is the case. With Shangri-La Frontier, we actually have two streams that cross with that, so we'll get to that in a second, but I also do not play video games, so it's going to be weird what I talk about, about why this comic is so good, and especially the video game aspect of it, but even weirder is that Joey and I I say hi, Joey. If you haven't watched one of our videos before, Joey is my editor. He's going to make this look like I'm not babbling in an empty shop for 45 minutes. But Joey also will put in little bits of information. Now, for him, this is going to be a very hard one because so far, most of the stuff we've done, Joey is pretty familiar with. But uh, he is not a manga dude. Like, he knows some manga, but he's definitely not up on the things I'm about to say, whether they're right or wrong. Generally, I'll say something and Joey will be like, well, that was actually 1980. Uh, but... I don't know how he's going to do the research on this. When I did Now of Brown, uh, you can watch Now of Brown. It's my previous recommendation. When I did that, I already knew that I was going to do this series. About two weeks after that, a customer reaches out to me. He goes, hey, there's this new anime on Crunchyroll, Shangri-La Frontier. It's based on a manga. You have that manga? And I'm like, Shangri-La Frontier's a, a, an anime? Again, as I said, I, I don't keep up with anime. It's like, yeah, man, it's really like fun and silly. And I'm like, it's fun and silly. See, because at that point, I had just read volume 10. Yes, it's very silly, but one of the reasons that we're recommending Shangri-La Frontier is that the silliness is used for a purpose. Shangri-La Frontier is a comic by Katarina with art. I say art, but it's really more than art. World Building by Ryosuke Fuji is, in my very simple, again, I'm really not a manga expert. I've read lots of manga that many people, especially in the United States, haven't heard of, but I have not read the vast majority of manga or even a very large chunk. Many of my customers are far more knowledgeable about manga than I am. I have talked about this book with, with a few of them and checked a few things uh, in my, you know, use of terms like, which I'm going to use throughout this video, shonen, shoujo. All that being said, my lack of knowledge for manga, lack of knowledge about video games, I disinterest in media tie-ins makes it really strange that we're talking about a book that started as a light novel series, became a manga, and is currently just wrapping up, I think, or just finished first season on Crunchyroll. That's not why I'm going to talk about this book. I'm going to talk about this book because this book is, in the way I view shonen comics, one of the perfect series for your adventure, action, world-building reads. This is a series that you can just enjoy. You do not have to go deep on it. You don't have to think about it, but it's just fun. Now, one of my customers and I were talking, and he reads basically everything on the Viz app. He just, he loves to read manga. He buys tons of manga. And I said, you never read this? He goes, oh, it's Kodansha. I said, yeah. He goes, Kodansha, the publisher, charges for every download of every chapter of, of a series. So he goes, I just don't get around to reading most of their stuff. I ran by him, uh, and I've talked about this to a few people, I believe that if this was on the Shonen Jump app, it would be one of the most popular series out there. Because part of the joy of Shonen, part of the joy of the action-adventure, pre-teen-teen -teen sensation that is a Shonen series, My Hero Academia, Dr. Stone, Ranma, all of those, is that the, the big one, the big one, uh, why is he not saying it? Say it, say it! One piece is that it just rolls forward. It just reintroduces the same concepts that you've loved and enjoyed in a new way. There's new side characters, there's new villains, there's new powers, and it just rolls forward. Done to perfection, obviously, in Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, but part of the point of that is that it's not Ranma. Ranma never ends. If you if you read Ranma, the ending is not an ending. Dragon Ball Z has an ending. So most shonens, part of the joy of it is that you can just see it rolling on. Berserk. Famously, Berserk has gone past three or four possible endings because it was popular enough and it just kept on going. So to me, part of the joy of a shonen series is the ease in which you can move a goalpost. 
change of motivation over multiple chapters to continue storylines that were defunct or to bring in new storylines that vaguely connect. Shangri-La Frontier does this to perfection. Possibly in the current slew of things, one of the tightest worlds, one of the most put together and sensical worlds out there because the entire basis takes place inside a video game. Here, Shangri-La Frontier features truly fantastic creatures, absolutely wonderful and dynamic action scenes, but all of it is in service to the main story and the main story is such a perfect shonen story. Somebody is playing a video game and he's just a ridiculously determined video game player. Now it's much more complicated than that, but the basic premise is this guy plays video games with the sharpest, he cares so freaking much. Not for stats, not for, but to beat the game. They call him a, well, they translate it into English as trash game hunter. He likes to play trash games. He likes to play games that are glitchy or have problems and exploit those problems and use them to play the game at a different level than it was originally played in a world where everything is played in fully immersive VR. Everything is a video game. You have hit points, you have skill points, you have levels. This is Shangri-La Frontier, the hottest game out, the game that everyone's been playing for years that anyone's a gamer talks about because the lore is so deep and the different quests and the various ways that you can play are so complicated that you could have an entire, it's a whole second life, but within a fantasy adventure realm with dedicated tasks. It's the biggest MMORPG ever. And Sanraku is finally gonna play it. That's the plot. But what unfolds is a video game storyline that only makes sense as a video game. If you were reading this as a fantasy adventure series, you go, what? You can't just say that. But in a video game, it makes perfect sense. Ah ha ha, you know? The smoke, Joey can do an animation here, I guess. The smoke comes up and the villain pops up and goes, you thought you've defeated me? You've only just begun. And then you go into level 17 when you thought there were only 16 levels. Like, it, it's, it's perfect. So the comic fully encapsulates that again. I know nothing about the anime or the original light novels they're based on. All I know is the manga. But this allows the series to set up so many things that again, we're not focused on the emotional journey of our character. We're not focused on the very slight romance subset that they put in. We're not even actually focused on the lore that's being unfolded about the world over the course of the whole series. We're about the idea that this person needs to win when he plays video games. There is no winning, it's just this endless unfolding series so he just goes as hard as he possibly can but what makes this work is that there are no stakes he's playing a video game once in a blue moon something that's what happens that he's like he runs out of lives and he has to be off the game for an hour and it's like right because because it's just a video game there are subplots like i said there's a romance subplot there's recently the ones that have been translated in volume 11 has the beginning of a uh, playing in professional video game subplot but those are really not the focus the focus is sanraku Again, I don't even remember the guy's actual name because that's the character he plays. Getting caught up in what is called the unique scenario in something that only one player at a time gets and that sending him down a course deeper into the lore of the game than anyone's ever played. Because of that, he runs up against all the major players who care about the lore of the game and has tons of adventures just a few weeks into starting the game. Again, he's just started playing. This thing could do... Uh, very popular in the Shonen series, a time skip. This series could just do a six month time skip and he's one of the most senior players. He's got a whole guild working under and it would make perfect sense. That's what makes this so fun. Uh, as I said with Nell Brown, it's part about realizing the whole full world that makes a graphic novel, that makes a series work. And the great thing about Shangri-La Frontier is that the world just works. You are not constantly thinking about why or how these things work. And if you are, it's down the guided path they've set up. Every uh, chapter ends with a great little game guide. It explains how a gamer would see the events that we just explored in the game. Uh, what is this creature? What, what kind of loot does it drop? Uh, how what activates it? The worlds are wonderful. The monsters and creatures are wonderful. The silliness is just pitch perfect in all of its little moments. Uh, and you get tons of great supporting cast characters, both NPCs and other players that could branch and fork off into all sorts of different alliances and already have in 11 series. So definitely, if you're looking for something new to read that's ongoing, uh, that really scratches that shonen itch, that really just has that 
unending action adventure. Can't do more than recommend Shangri-La Frontier. Really, I uh, think you should grab it. If you are local or you want to reach out through YouTube for Elvis Order, we don't have the whole series up on the, our website, but you can reach out to us and we can definitely ship you some. Keep an eye out. We do a live video every day here on YouTube. Uh, we also post on social media at least once a day on Instagram and Facebook, occasionally on Blue Sky and Twitter. So keep an eye on those if you want. Stop into the shop, 302 Main Street, Huntington, New York. Manga is just one of the many sections that we have in the store. If you like the video, check out our others, like, subscribe, all that, all that stuff. Until our next video, keep reading comics.